We are now going to do the second lesson of the force and moment tutorial. The goal of this second lesson is to study the equilibrium of uh, a part that is in contact with a, a plane uh, itself at an angle of 20 degrees. The goal of this lesson is to find out uh, what is the coefficient of friction that allows to uh, keep the part in the equilibrium state. As you can see, we have to draw the slope itself and then the, the part, and we have to create the center of gravity of this part. So to do that, we create uh, simply two lines like this. We are going to say that those two lines have uh, the same length. So as before, I will also change the, uh, the size of the text. So I will say this line has a length of uh, 150, uh, this line as well. Then I will create a fixed point and a fixed angle on this line. So I will enter a value of 0 degrees on this line and then we will enter uh, an angle between the two lines which we will put at uh, 20 degrees. Uh, we will define that those three dimensions should be with uh, uh, they should be theoretical dimensions. So we put them under the basic uh, option here in the tolerances. Uh, then we are going to create the part that slide slides itself. So the thickness is going to be 15 and the length is going to be 60. Uh, on this part, we will also create a region. So using the region button here, we can click on one of the borders of this region and then type enter. So this creates a region inside of the um, sliding part. And then we are going to create a center of gravity or centroid of this uh, region using this button here. So we click on the region and it creates the centroid. Next step, we are going to stay, say that uh, this point here should be lying on the plane and this one as well should be lying on the plane. And uh, when we have done that, we see that uh, the part has now only one remaining degree of freedom, which is the uh, translation movement. So we lock this translation using a dimension between the corner of the slope and the left side. Okay, so we'll say we have uh, here, let's say, a position of uh, 40 millimeters. So next, I will start modeling the different forces that are applied. So we model here first one force going down and starting at the centroid. We can say, for example, this force is uh, 100 newtons. And we have to say that it will be perpendicular to the bottom plane of the system. So 100 newtons and perpendicular to the bottom plane. Then we'll model the reaction force. So we say we have a force like this, uh, pointing uh, around here. We will say that this force should be at the middle. So I click here one time and it places it at the middle of the big uh, segment. So it's not what I want, I just say I click here, I say right click and I can select the line that I want. Uh, in the version 2.1.6, it's necessary to click several times to select the middle point of the lower face of the, of the component. Then we can say this force has to be perpendicular to the plane of contact. And then we will also associate a friction to this uh, force. So, if you want, at that stage, stage, you can hide the layer called uh, dimensions. So it will hide all the dimensions and we will only have the forces left. So um, the friction force that we created is uh, represented here by the, the friction vector. We also have a friction coefficient here on the list of variables. Uh, we see that since the component is uh, sliding down, normally the friction should be opposed to the sliding movement. 
So we have to use the button here to reverse the sliding, the, the friction force. So now the force is correctly pointing uh, up. So the last step in this exercise will be to solve the calculation. So to do that, we will unlock the normal force. And then we will also unlock the friction force, the friction coefficient here on the right. So this gives us two degrees of freedom. And uh, to solve those two degrees of freedom, we will use the sum of forces. So we will say sum in x and y of the vertical force, the normal force, and the friction force should be zero. Okay, so this solves the force calculation. And uh, now you can see the system is telling us that uh, for the component to be at the equilibrium state, we need to have a friction coefficient of 0 0.363. And the nice thing is uh, if we access again to the dimensions, uh, so we know that for an angle of 20 degrees, we need to have a friction of 0 0.363. If we move the angle, the friction will update. So we have different friction values for different uh, slopes. And uh, it's also possible to reverse the calculation. Let's say, for example, we know that we have a friction value of 0 0.3. We could ask to the system what is the maximum uh, angle that we can reach with a friction of 0 0.3. So to do this, we can reverse the calculation. We can say we unlock the angle of 20 degrees. Now we lock the friction and we put it at 0 0.3. So the system calculates that for a friction of 0 0.3, we can only reach an angle of 16.7 degrees.